Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Uh, I ran across a mention in a couple of videos um, about AGC with relation to digital modes and the recommendation that you should turn off or at least turn your AGC to fast when running digital modes. And I thought that might be an interesting subject to talk about and explain. Um, there's a good reason for that. And uh, that also made me think about filtering and uh, something that I've been doing when I run PSK and some other digital modes um, that uh, really makes a difference when the band is busy. So I figured that's what I would talk about today. Uh, first off, AGC, Automatic Gain Control. Just for those of you that uh, um, aren't uh, familiar with what it is or what it does or why it does what it does, I thought I would do a quick primer on uh, AGC. So I threw together this simple block diagram um, most receivers are going to follow this, uh, this layout here. Uh, your signal's coming in from the antenna, goes through an RF amplifier. Uh, there's a mixer that I forgot to draw in here that converts it to an IF frequency. Uh, goes through a series of IF amplifiers and filters and then comes out to a detector where the audio is detected for whatever mode you're on and goes off to your audio amplifier. The AGC down here, uh, it receives a signal from the detector and that is a voltage that's going to reflect the strength of the received signals, right? So the stronger a received signal, um, the higher this voltage or lower depending upon how it's configured, but this voltage is going to change as uh, signals coming in are stronger. And then the AGC amplifier is going to drive some circuitry back here in the RF amp that's going to change its gain, hence automatic gain control. And the reason for that is um, if, if you had no AGC uh, and a strong signal comes in, it's going to be really loud, possibly even distorted. Uh, and then if a small or weak signal comes in, it might be really quiet, hard to hear. So what the AGC is aiming to do is it's aiming to adjust the amplification at the RF amp to compensate and try to keep these high and low signals at a normalized level, right? At a level where they're comfortable to listen to, they're not clipping, they're not too quiet. So, you know, if the band is just static and a weak signal comes in, you're going to have enough amplification to hear that signal. But then if a strong signal comes in, it's going to back that gain down uh, so the strong signal doesn't overdrive and, and, and sounds normal. And that's great for most um, modes like single sideband and, and um, voice modes, AM. When it comes to digital modes, however, the AGC action can cause you to lose some data. Usually the AGC is not very abrupt. It kind of ramps up and ramps down. So there's a smooth transition, right? So let's say that you're receiving a digital signal, um, a ready signal or a PSK signal, and he's fading a little bit, right? So his, his signal is coming up and then it's going down. The AGC is going to follow that kind of slow. And just like there, the signal might go up and come down real quick, and the AGC might not come down fast enough to keep up with it. So what will happen is, uh, your received signal, the audio getting to your rig interface, will come up and then disappear as, as the signal dropped down before the AGC had a chance to follow it down and eventually um, catch up to it and then that signal come back up. So during that period of time where the AGC is lagging behind the digital signal, you can lose um, a chunk of data, right? You can lose bits. So having the AGC fast, where it's going to follow that signal more, or even turning it off altogether, is going to improve copy on um, how many, you know, on getting all of the digital data. You're not going to have gaps in there. You're not going to drop bits. So that's the general idea behind turning the AGC off um, when you're doing digital modes. There's another factor, um, however. Uh, let's take a look at a waterfall um, 
example here, okay? So this is a fairly busy night on PSK. A couple of different examples here, right? Um, but let's look at this one down here. In fact, let me just uh, zoom in on that one. Okay, so we've got really strong signals, right? And we've got really weak signals. Now, if I'm interested in copying um, this weak signal over here, uh, I'm going to have a hard time picking him up, right? It might be nice to have a little extra amplification, uh, a little extra gain. Well, the AGC control is going to be responding to this stronger signal and this stronger signal here because all of this energy, right, all of these signals are coming through in your passband. Um, the waterfall is representing your passband up here. If you see these numbers across the top, uh, if you think of zero over here somewhere as the point that your VFO is dialed into. So if you've got your VFO dialed to 7070.0, then that would that would uh, correspond to the zero over here. And this would be 7070.5, this would be 7071, 1 kilohertz, 7071.5, 7072 um, kilohertz. This is the audio passband of your receiver, right? Because your normal filter, and we're going to get to filters here in a moment, um, is 2.3 kilohertz the audio filter in your IF chain. So all of these signals are separated out by tone, okay? This, these represent a pitch. So if, if this signal here, for example, is lined up right here. And if we look at that, that's 1500, 1600, 1700, and 80, right? So if you listen to this audio, it would be an audio pitch of about 1780 um, hertz. This signal down here would be about 900 hertz. Um, that's how PSK and some narrower digital modes allow you to have multiple contacts without tuning your radio around. They, they are so narrow that they can sit within chunks of that passband. But because of that, all of these stations are being seen by the AGC circuit. So it's going to see this strong station and it's going to reduce your RF gain and uh, therefore make it harder to copy this weak station. If that strong station wasn't present, the AGC might back off and bring up the RF gain, and this weaker signal here might be a little more copyable. So that's, uh, that's another factor with AGC. Turning it off, you might have a better chance of copying this weak signal. But that brings us into filters. So if we go back and we look at this um, block diagram, what I did not draw, which is right here in the middle, is a filter section, okay? That's where your filters exist. They're in the IF chain. Uh, a filter for like single sideband is usually 2.3 kilohertz wide. Uh, and it's gonna pass all the signals that are within that range. Your actual IF chain has a much wider bandwidth, maybe tens or, or 20 uh, kilohertz, or 10 or 20 hertz, uh, yeah, kilohertz wide. Um, and your, your uh, filter is narrowing down and just passing a little bit of that, right, at uh, say 2.3 kilohertz wide for single sideband. For CW, um, Morse code, you might have a narrow filter that's 500 hertz wide. And that can be really useful when you're running digital modes. Now what I've got going on here is, let me just hide this, hide that. We'll bring this over. This is a screen capture, a live screen share from my netbook over here. And it's running FL Digi presently, sitting on uh, two me uh, 20 meters. So this is live from the radio. And right now I've got the wide filter uh, switched in. So we're seeing the full 2.3 kilohertz um, bandwidth across here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna switch in there we go. I'm going to switch in uh, my narrow filter. So let me reach over here and I'll put the video up. You know what? Where am I going to put it? Uh, I'll put it up here. Uh, you'll see the, the video from the camera here looking at the front of the radio. So over here I've got a switch that allows me to switch in uh, my narrow filter. I'm going to switch that in. Now as you can see my CW filter, which is uh, 300 and 
70 um, hertz wide, I think, <clears throat> has switched in and is only passing this much of the signal here. That's actually, let's see, that's one, two, that's three, that's 300 hertz, yeah, okay. Well, wait, uh, one, two, three, yeah, almost 400 hertz wide. So it's passing just a small section of the, uh, of the filter range. So if we go back and we look at um, a typical PSK session here in FL Digi, what we could do is we could, we could filter just this signal here, okay? And since we're filtering in the IF chain, what's gonna happen is this um, energy that's coming through is, is going to be narrowed down to just this, and that's the only section of energy that the AGC circuit is going to respond to now. It's not going to see the energy from this signal over here. It's only going to see what we're passing through to it. And in doing that, we will greatly improve our chances of copying the weaker signal because the gain is going to come up to respond to just that signal. It's not going to respond to the, uh, to the much stronger signal. Now, here's a, a problem on the older radios. Your filter is fixed, okay? It's fixed at a specific frequency um, within the IF bandwidth. So for example, my narrow filter here is centered around one kilohertz. Well, if I turn that filter off, let's, let's hope that other station is still there. Yeah, he's there, he's just a little weak. Um, Let's say that the station I'm interested in copying is up here. Well, my narrow filter is down here. Now, there's two ways that I could um, shift that station that I'm interested in down into my filter. Right, there he is now. Uh, one way would be to tune the VFO, right, and try to track him down there. That's kind of hard to do because the waterfall is updating slowly. You'll be trying to, trying to find him as you're moving down, and by the time you get there, he might have stopped transmitting. Um, it's going to take time. A quicker way to do it is to use the IF shift control on your radio. Now this is a control that, that I don't think a lot of people ever fiddle with. They don't understand what it's there for. Um, the IF shift will do what, it's, what it says. It'll shift the, the IF frequency up and down, okay? Uh, independent of your filtering and of your detector, it's gonna shift the IF. So in that way, you can sort of slide that window of signals back and forth within your filter. It's kind of like moving the filter, except you're not moving the filter, you're moving everything else underneath it. So let's, let's look at that as an example here. Now that I've got this uh, station going again, I'm gonna go, oh, he stopped. Well, that's okay. We can see our indicator there. So I'm gonna go back to the narrow filter. Okay, now I know the station I'm interested in is over here. I'm gonna take the IF shift control on my radio, and I'm gonna rotate that, and you'll see that band pass apparently moving up and right there I'll now be passing the range that that station is on ignoring all of the energy that's down here or other stations that are down here. So using the IF shift control I can shift my crystal or mechanical filter apparently or else it's, it's not really shifting the filter but I can shift the effect of the filter up and down within that passband area to select the station that I'm interested in copying. Most modern radios, oh there he is, oops, I hit a key I didn't need to hit. So there you can see we're copying just him, we're not, we're not hearing any of the other band. Now most modern radios, um, current radios that have DSP uh, filtering, give you all kinds of control over your filtering. You can, you can change the band pass of the filter linearly, you know, to anything you want, um, and you can change its center um, within the IF range to anything you want just by twiddling knobs. And that's great on modern radios. But if you have an older radio, um, like in my case the Kenwood 440S, or an older ICOM or whatever, that IF shift control will let you dial around that, that narrow filter very quickly and easily. See there, I just pulled it back to a thousand. Oh look, there's another station there. See, we, we weren't even aware that that station was there because we were narrowed down on that other section. I could even go lower. 
you see. And that's useful for all digital modes when you're in upper sideband. And also, we'll go back to the wide filter. Um, when you're operating CW, uh, if you're not happy with where your filter is centered, you know, let's say that by default your filter is centered on, on 800 hertz, but you like to listen to a lower CW tone, you know, and you want to, uh, to, sh to, to shift that, nar that narrow filter down a little bit. You can do that with the IF shift control. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, and uh, if you're running digital modes like PSK or um, Thor, Olivia, uh, and you have a narrower filter, that can help you to copy those weaker stations or work those weaker stations when there's stronger stations directly adjacent. Um, so there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.